Hello, my name is Dr John Wills and I'm a video game researcher based at the University of Kent, author of the book Game and Nation and working with the Micro Museum, also based in Kent. Today I'm going to talk about the classic video game that is having its 40th anniversary this year. Yes, it can only be Pac-Man. <laughs> On 22nd of May 1980, Namco placed its first Pac-Man arcade machine, originally called Pac-Man, in a Tokyo movie theatre. The game depicted a yellow mouth-like character tasked with moving around a maze, eating dots and avoiding ghosts. It was neither the first maze game nor the first non-violent arcade game. What did make Pac-Man distinctive was its family-focused, bright and accessible gameplay. Its designer consciously crafted a title to quote, for women and people who don't really play games. It also had a distinctive yellow character to control, a fun and cartoonish mascot. Pac-Man was released in the USA and other international markets later that year. In North America, Pac-Man became a huge sensation. Revenue from the arcade machine quickly exceeded $1 billion, a figure more than the movie Star Wars, released a few years prior. Pac-Man fever took hold, and not just in arcades. A very cleverly merchandised title, Pac-Man could be found everywhere. The little yellow figure cropped up on clothing, on duvets, on the radio, Yes, there was a Pac-Man song, and even in your cereal bowl, you could buy Pac-Man spaghetti. One of the first mascots of the video game era, Pac-Man had widespread cultural and brand recognition. Pac-Man also highlighted how far video games had infiltrated mainstream culture by the beginning of the 1980s. Rather than hidden in dingy arcades, in closed communities, video games had come to enter everyday life. The Atari VCS could be found in most homes, with game cartridges of arcade hits such as Space Invaders, Asteroids and Missile Command proving popular. Pac-Man was part of the so-called golden age of arcade video games. The title inspired many copycats, myriad clones. These included Lock and Chase, Mousetrap and other dot-eating maze games. On the right of your screen is an image of Ladybug for the ColecoVision, an excellent arcade type title. On the left of your screen is the handheld Munchman. In the UK we had Hungry Horace for the ZX Spectrum. Felix and the Fruit Monsters for the BBC microcomputer and Electron. Some titles were virtually identical to the original Pac-Man and legal cases duly followed. Pac-Man succeeded because yes, it was family friendly. Yes, it was easy and fun to play. I also think it appealed because it involved another special ingredient, the activity of eating. CNN once called Pac-Man the eating icon, and I think there's some truth to that. Inspiration for the shape of Pac-Man did indeed come from pizza slices. The sound of him chomping food, well that came from chomping, you can hear it here. <laughs> the eating of power pills in the game is taken from the cartoon character Popeye, who eats spinach as his own power-up. For his muscles. I also think there's a connection with broader ideas of consumer culture and mass consumption. The basic concept of the game is after all to consume everything possible. It's also interesting that bonuses come in the form of fruit in the guise of cherries and strawberries. These images link very well to the older history of amusements and arcades. Think of classic slot machines or one-armed bandits and their own cherries as rewards. 
The popularity of Pac-Man may also reflect some broader themes in food culture and eating in the period. 1970s and 1980s food was, well, colourful in the extreme. It was also often based around fast food, quick snacks, convenience. Think jello and instant mash. TV dinners and McDonald's. McDonald's, for example, introduced its first Happy Meal less than a year before Pac-Man. Pac-Man was also not the only 80s game to feature food and drink. Super Mario Brothers, a screen from it in your left corner, first came out around that time, and Mario indeed loved his mushrooms. In the title Food Fight, chefs fight, yes, over bananas and other food. Budweiser, Pepsi and Kool-Aid got involved in the game industry around this time. Films and games both featured product placement. The theme of food and games continues to this day, from hunting and cooking your meat in Red Dead Redemption 2, through to the fun of the cooking simulator, Cooking Mama. You can, of course, still play Pac-Man. Popping pills at 40, they're still speeding away from ghosts. Thanks for listening. Follow me on Twitter at Dr. John W.